Who knows what's in store for them? Who knows what God has planned for them? Who knows that God wants you to know what's coming? He wants you to be prepared and he wants you to foster. Last week, we started looking at the seals in the book of Revelation. The first seal warns us about the false prophets, those that come in Jesus' name, speak words that sound like Jesus would speak, yet do not match with the written word in the Holy Bible. The white horse with a rider with a single crown and a bow. Matthew saw it, Matthew 24. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand, so if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. So Mark warns us that these false prophets and false Christs are coming. What about the remaining seals? Let's take a look at the other three horsemen that have spoken about the seals. Revelation 6.3 When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth so that people should slay one another and he was given a great sword. War. The red horse of war. Do we see wars in the world today? Well, yes, there have been wars right throughout time. The Old Testament has many records of wars. History has many records of wars. The First World War was called the War to End All Wars, the Great War. And then a few decades later, along came the Second World War, then the Korean War, then the Vietnam War. Then we had the Gulf War. Then we had the War on Terror. Then we had the War on Peace. Then we had the War on Drugs. Then we had the War on... And so it goes on. We hear of these wars and rumours of wars. Terrorism is a rumour of war. Watch out, because they might do this. So we live in fear for what might happen, what may happen. Matthew wrote in Matthew 24, And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not alarmed. For this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Who's been watching the news over the last year? <laughs> For those that have been watching the news over the last year, you will see there is unrest here, there is unrest there, there is a war going on here, there is another war over there, there is terrorism happening over there, and there's something going on over there. But watch out, you don't go and hang out with those people because they're doing something. Rumours of wars. The number of humans that have been killed in wars in the last just over a hundred years 
is a phenomenal number of people. And if you look at that compared to the world population at the time, at the time of the First World War, the number of deaths versus the world's population, you will see that it was quite a significant number. But it was not one-fourth of the world's population. War is not a new concept. Taking of life is not a new concept. If we go right back to the book of Genesis, we see that the first taking of human life was Cain and Abel, two brothers. Genesis 4.8, Cain spoke to Abel his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. See, we have a war to end all wars that is coming. The Bible is very clear. It also says if it were not for God and Christ, we would not survive. Matthew wrote, And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. What causes war? What caused Cain to murder Abel? When God refused Cain's offering, he did so not because of what it was, but because he could see Cain's sinful heart. And that meant his self-interest was threatened. I want to get in good with God, and he's just rejected me. So, so I'm, I'm on the outside. So his self-interest was threatened. And as a result, he would have become angry and then aggressive. And that anger and aggression would have then resulted in him becoming a murderer. That's the same aggression that countries show one another when there's a dispute over water, over oil, over boundaries, over religion, political ideology, when their resources have run out and become depleted, and you have those resources, that is the same anger that governments show each other, the human anger element. So we need to understand that there is a war coming. And it's not just a war as in on the battlefield in a theatre of war. It's also a war of the mind. There's a truth. There's a truth on, on a battlefield, a theatre of war. And it says that with the brutal reality that you're going to meet there, you will find a God. Not necessarily the God of the Bible, but you will find a God. If it's not the God of the Bible, that God will usually result in addiction and a lot of mental trauma. It's something that those that serve in the military do willingly. They give a blank check to the citizens of the country and says, I will protect your rights, your freedoms, and in return, I will give my life. That's a very noble and a very honourable and heroic thing to do. We've just had communion. That's what Jesus did for us. He gave his life so that we may have our freedom. That is where part of this war is. A war of the mind, a war for your spirituality. 
but it is also going to be a physical conflict. For those that have been watching the news, you will hear about this trade war that's been going on between China and the US. And with what's happening in the South China Sea, it might result in a physical war. War res usually results in a lot of other things happening. And that's where the third horse, the black horse, the rider on the black horse, the horse of famine. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, and I looked, and behold, a black horse. And its rider had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and wine. When that was written, a denarius was a day's wage. A quart of wheat was enough nutrition for a person that was doing physical work to be able to survive the day. Barley was often used as a cheaper alternative to bulk out the wheat. If I get three quarts of barley and one quart of wheat, mix it all together, I've got four quarts of food for a day's wage. So the food I eat for the day has cost me my wage for the day. I'm living to eat. What does that do? We now have a famine. Well, again, Matthew wrote, just for us, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. We see in countries where there have been shortages of food that what little there is has been used to control the people. Those that are in power want to remain in power. And they will use every opportunity to use what's happening as a crisis to control the people they want to control. We see that happens in the Old Testament where kings were controlling their people, enslaved them. And God's chosen people were many times put into slavery. We know that Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. We know that when there was a famine in the land, they went to Egypt. Yeah. And there was a reunion of his family. Yeah. Sorry, Jacob. Have you been seeing how 12 months ago we had abundance in the world? Have you been seeing how today we have great floods happening in places? We have droughts, we've had fires. We've had all of these natural disasters that are going to wipe out our food supply. Even in this country, have you seen it? What are some of the ways that in the Bible we read about famines being created? We read about great floods. We read about great plagues of locusts. Some of the things happening in the world today, and I quote, 
China's food security concerns mount, but supply risks are growing as farmers hoard grains. And that's, a, that's from the South China Morning Post. From the United Nations, already 135 million people have been facing acute food shortages. But now, with the pandemic, 130 million more could go hungry in 2020, said Arif Hussain, Chief Economist at the World Food Programme. Altogether, an estimated 265 million people could be pushed into the brink of starvation by year's end. So in the world today, in the mainstream media, they are telling us that the Bible is very prophetic and very true. <clears throat> Unprecedented locust plague in Kenya and Horn of Africa threatening food security. Another headline that jumped out this morning. When the day comes, it won't be just toilet paper that's been running off the shelves. You see, God is making sure that when you read your Bible, you are being prepared for the future. You know what is coming and you will prepare for it. Then we have the fourth horse. The fourth horse is the pale horse of pestilence. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. And they were given great authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, and with famine, and with pestilence, and by wild beasts of the earth. The horse is the colour of death. In Greek, it's called chloros. It's a pale green colour, said to be the colour of a corpse. What we're seeing here is the seals have a cumulative effect. As each one is released, it impacts on the previous. False religion causes instability with relationships and that leads to war. False religions today could be environmental things, it could be civil rights, it could be human rights. Have you noticed how the more human rights we have, the less God rights there are? Famine always follows war, it has throughout history and it will continue to do so. And when malnourishment occurs and social systems break down, human beings become more susceptible to disease. God wants you to have a body that is healthy, Amen. a body that you can heal, Amen. and part of that is having a healthy immune system, Amen. eating the right foods. Amen. God said, through his word, your body is a temple. Amen. These seals depict the ferocity of problems unleashed on the world in the lead up, in the lead up to the day of the Lord. It says that by the time the fourth horseman rides his ride, one fourth, one quarter, one in four people in this world will have been impacted by an incredible devastation. Are you ready for that? Are you prepared for that? Are you ready for what we are being told is to come? The death toll of one quarter of the Earth's population is greater than any plague we've ever had. The bubonic plague, the Spanish flu. But that's not the end. Not yet. You see, as the other seals are open, 
More hardships are going to fall on humanity. But this is all just a preparation for one thing, the fifth horseman. And you will not find the fifth horseman in the book of Revelations or Revelation 6. You will have to go all the way to Revelation 19 for that. And it says, Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many crowns, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with an iron rod. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This horseman gives us hope. Amen. This fifth horseman, he is our Saviour. Remember that God wants you to know what's coming, to prepare for it, and he wants you to prosper. Amen. Praise the Lord.